Well, now welcome back. Now, Kenya risks being drawn out of the world swimming body that is FINA unless elections are held by June. And it's in that regard that we kick off our Saturday Sports interview, whereby in studio we're joined by Reginald uh, Okumu, who is actually a member of the Interim Management Committee at KSF, that is the Kenya Swimming Federation. Welcome very much, Bona Okumu. Thank you for joining us here in studio. Thanks for the invitation. And perhaps you can start by, let's say, are we really going to be banned or are we going to hit the order or the request by FINA? Uh, first, let me clarify. There is no, there is no sanction that was attached to, mm -hmm. to the communication. Mm -hmm. uh, FINA did say they would like to see us hold elections on 31st, mm -hmm. and that's, that was the end of the statement. Okay. Uh, they are willing to offer support to make sure that uh, we go through this process uh, quickly and uh, in the best way possible. Okay. So the idea that there was a, a sanction attached to, to the deadline um, is far-fetched. So that is a far-fetched idea? Yes. Okay, and now, so when are we going to see the K KSF hold the elections? Uh, our, our, our goal is to make sure that these elections are held as quickly as possible. And we, we are willing to work within the, the deadlines that has been given by FINA. Okay. Um, but of course, there are a number of things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is that we need to have a constitution in place. Mm -hmm. uh, it has taken quite a bit of time. But I think it's important for us to go uh, at the beginning of how all this, uh, when the interim management committee was formed, it identified nine issues that needed to be addressed. Okay. And one of them was governance. Mm -hmm. uh, and the best way we, 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 we thought governance needs to be addressed is by having a new constitutional arrangement. Okay. Um, and that has been an ongoing process. Uh, a lot of discussions have taken place. We are basically, uh, as, of, as of the last IMC, mm -hmm. we, 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 we did discuss and agree that we need to expedite mm -hmm. uh, the coming out of this, of this con constitution. Okay. This Monday, a small uh, group met uh, with the help of, a, of, a, of an expert, mm -hmm. uh, and that is Rombo, Edward Rombo. And we did thrash out quite a, quite a bit of discussion on the constitution. Mm -hmm. Now it is being uh, reworked by, by Sanjeev mm -hmm. uh, Kagram, who is the chairman of, uh, of the governance committee. And any time uh, between now and maybe Wednesday or end of next week, we should have this draft out circulated. Okay, but now Kumu, maybe bear with me for a minute. Uh, would you please clarify, why has it taken that long? Because I understand it, it has taken close to two years. So what was the delay about? Um, a number of things need to, need to be taken into account. Mm -hmm. um, one is a constitution. A constitution uh, is, is, uh, is, it requires a lot of discussion. Uh, it's back and forth. We are discussing how, how we are going to be governed. Mm -hmm. uh, and also remember that we have a new, a new arrangement in terms of how sports is organized in this country. Sure. One of them is the Sports Act. Uh, the way the constitutions were framed before the coming of the Sports Act was very different from what they need to be framed now. Uh, so trying to put all these new, new pers into perspective requires a bit of time, uh, requires a bit of, uh, uh, a bit of discussion. But also the swimming fraternity itself has been very, very divided. Okay. Remember, even as you speak right now, we are actually uh, around a table uh, in front of the tribunal trying mm -hmm. to sort out these matters. Okay. So it has not been an easy process, but we are happy that it has made, we've made a lot of, a lot of progress mm -hmm. uh, towards, we are basically coming towards, towards the end. And I think this is a time for us to appeal to all the stakeholders. Yeah. Uh, let's pull together uh, and, and work together towards uh, achieving this, this goal. Okay, and you mentioned that, there, of course, there are not really such big differences, but there are differences. And maybe some of the grievances expressed by some of the parties who are not content with how matters are at the moment, uh, some of the concern that some voiced is that the committee has actually outrun its mandate. Is that true? Um, I think there's a misunderstanding between uh, how this committee was formed. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between a committee formed by the cabinet secretary under the Sports Act. Mm -hmm. Remember, this matter is in the tribunal. Uh, the IMC sits in the tribunal. Okay. Uh, and every time we sit, we have the chairman uh, of this committee is, is the chairman of the tribunal. Mm -hmm. So we are basically in a mediation process. Okay. Um, the committee is running swimming because swimming could not stop. Remember, uh, and, and if you go back even to to the first judgment that was given by Judge Onguto, the late uh, Onguto. He was very clear in terms of how we need to make sure that swimming continues, even as all these things are being addressed. Yeah. And the same ruling was repeated in the, in the tribunal ruling. Okay. So even as we discussed the constitution and all the other matters, swimming has continued. We planned our programs. 
in Mombasa, in Nairobi, swimming, swimming competitions are taking place. Our teams are, are participating in uh, international events. We've not missed any. Uh, so in that context, we need to appreciate that this is not, uh, the committee you're talking about was not formed under uh, the Sports Act by the Communist Secretary, which has an interim mandate. But that does not mean that it's supposed to be permanent. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it also needs to. It's interim and it needs to uh, conclude as quickly as possible. Okay. And another issue is the issue of, let's now move away from the politics of it to the sport itself, or well, a bit of politics in that regard too. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the criteria used to select swimmers, there has been quite a debate on that. At the moment, I understand that the swimmers are based on their ranking that is according to FINA, which is the world body that's you know, mandated to overlook anything to do with water sports. That is the criteria being used at the moment, but some are still saying that it's still unfair that the JSC was done away with. Uh, also, let's try and put this matter of the JSC to rest. Uh -huh. uh, JSC was formed out of a ruling that was made by, by the late Justice Omoto, uh -huh. and uh, it was a court settlement. The parties that had gone to court, which is Nairobi Swimming Association, uh -huh. uh, parents, and uh, KSF agreed uh -huh. to sort out their matter out of court. And uh, based on the judgment that was given, mm -hmm. uh, the judge was very clear that we need to have a very clear, open process of selection that is inclusive. And the best way we thought that that could be done is by the, the three parties forming a committee, which, they call, which we call the JSC, mm -hmm. to do the selections. Um, when, we, when, when these matters now came before the tribunal, mm -hmm. the tribunal basically formed an interim committee to, to, uh, to run swimming. Yeah. And one of the committees that was formed under the IMC was Competitions Management Committee, which right now is the one that is, doing, is handling the issues of selection and competitions. Okay. So I think one of the things we need to appreciate then mm -hmm. is that the JSC uh, mandate did actually run, it did, come, did expire with the formation of the IMC. Okay. This, the same, same parties you're talking about are the ones sitting in the IMC, now being mediated by the tribunal itself. Okay. On the issue of, of criteria of selections, we have different criteria depending on the competitions. Mm -hmm. For instance, the competitions we like uh, for uh, something like Kana, Kana Zone 3, Kana Zone 4, uh, Africa Junior, and uh, say Africa Senior. Yeah. The criteria that is used is very different, given that the numbers in, in these competitions are not limited. You can take as many as, 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 as the events uh, allow. But when it comes to competitions like the World Championships and the Olympics, there, is, there are qualifying times. Okay. And these qualifying times are set by FINA. In our case, uh, and I think uh, for the last uh, many years, other than for the Danfords, we've never been able to make these qualifying times. So what we qualify on are the universality slots. And for us to be able to select the best, then you must, use, you must pick the swimmers who have the highest winner points. Okay. But it is not the only criteria that we use. It is just one of them. There's also a criteria on the swimmer must be competitive ready. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't really, you, you making the FINA points uh, allows you to get into the cutoff point. But the next right. step then is, is about you being competitive ready. So it's a process really. It is a it's process. It's not a one-off no, thing. No, it's, a tiered, it's a tiered criteria okay. where FINA points is one of them. And, 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 and for us, and it's the best because when you're going to, to a competition like the Olympics, you want to take your best. FINA rankings, if you're the highest FINA ranked swimmer in your country, it means you're the best, because FINA rankings are based on, on, the, on the world record, the, the people who are able to swim the fastest. Okay, can, can I slip in a question just yes. in between there? Because you mentioned it's a process, of course, it's not only about the rankings, but then again, you have that situation whereby your best swimmer has to go for such competitions. But then again, is there ever an instance whereby your best swimmer is not you know, actively competing in any competitions? Um, I wouldn't see a situation where you're saying our best swimmer is based on the FINA rankings. Mm -hmm. So in this case, if we select you, and remember the, the issue about this best swimmer is very subjective. Mm -hmm. You could be the, the, best, the best or the highest ranked uh, swimmer today. Uh, but remember swimmers are swimming almost every other day, every other week. So this time you could be the highest, uh, FINA, uh, highest ranked, but a month from now you're not. Okay. So when you talk about the best swimmer, what, what exactly are you talking about? And I think it's important for us to ask ourselves, who, who, who are we talking about as the best swimmer? The best swimmer in this case, when it comes to, FINA, to, to selections, is the highest, the swimmer with the highest FINA rankings. Okay. And those ones are open for us to tell. If today you tell me your time is X, 
we can just plug into a FINA calculator. It will show us your rankings. So based on statistics. Precisely. Okay. Now I have uh, the next question. I had actually mentioned this to you before the interview. Uh, let's, for example, three of the five uh, swimmers who represented Kenya last year in Australia during the Commonwealth Games are actually swimmers who are based outside Kenya. And yes, all that you know, I understand. They have to be chosen by the FINA rankings and all that. But does that really mean that? here in the country, our standards are really quite low, or what does that really mean, considering, I mean, there were about four, if I'm not wrong, out of five. So what, what does that mean for us? We, are we not up to par with the international standards, or what's happening? Uh, there are many reasons why, why we are not able to, or it doesn't appear that we are able to produce local swimmers. But I'd like to go back, and other than this uh, uh, last year, Mm -hmm. But in the past, we've had swimmers from Kenya who, who've been able to go. Someone like Ramadan Vyombo, who, who was based in Mombasa, did represent Kenya in a number of, of international meets. Uh, and he, has, he was basically locally trained and, 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 and bred. Uh, but one of the things we need to realize is that our swimming in this country is uh, highly school-based. Uh, it's actually a teenage sport, mm -hmm. uh, unlike in other parts of the world where it is, it is a, a young adult sport. So, if, for instance, if you look at the, at the swimmers in the, in, the, in the Olympic finals of the World Championship, yeah. they're mostly university students. Okay. Uh, in this country, if you go to a swimming galas, uh, the swimmers you find are mostly either in primary school or high school. Uh, so, we, we, have a, we have a disconnect in the sense that we are not able to, 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 to our swimmers are not able to transit from uh, school swimming to, say, university or college swimming. Uh, and also, if you look at our, at our universities, they don't participate in our galas. We don't have university swimmers uh, coming. Although we see Kenyatta University, we see uh, the last gala I saw at the University of Nairobi uh, or Jekwat. Uh, but hardly these are, in fact, if you talk to the coaches, they tell you most of those swimmers actually start swimming when they come to the university. Our swimmers here, when they go to the university, they stop. Uh, and the ones who are able to continue swimming are the ones who, who are able to go outside. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so I think on my part would be we need to be able to, to we need to be able to introduce one scholarships for our swimmers to, to continue to school here mm -hmm. and they're able to continue swimming but also we need to grow a lot more club swimming um, club swimming would be one of the ways in which we can make sure that there's continuity after school for the swimmers to continue swimming okay and now of course the national championships came to a close last weekend what next after that uh, after the national championships, we're heading to, to our trials now. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be held in April. Uh, the trials will be for us to select the teams that will go for, for the world championships. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this is important for, for, for people to, to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, unless we get Kenyans earning either an A or a B time, uh, qualifying time, we have to revert back to the, to yeah. the universality slot. For, for, for the audience, maybe, who do not understand that, because you said the A, the B, Maybe just, just clarify that, just briefly. Okay. In, in terms of, of, of qualifying times uh, for Olympics and the World Championships, mm -hmm. FINA does set qualifying times. Mm -hmm. And they do set two times. The A time, if you get the A time, you, you're on an automatic qualifier. Uh, for B, you qualify, but you still have to wait to make sure that, because they, they, they use that to regulate the number of people they would like to go for to swim. Mm -hmm. And then the universality slots, where FINA would, for the purpose of exclusivity, will look at, and say uh, we need to have swimmers from some of these developing countries, mm -hmm. let them come and swim. So most of the time we have been going on, on universality slots. Uh, and for you even to qualify on those universality slots, you need to go to the World Championships. So it is a precondition. Yeah. So what we need is to see uh, swimmers come for the trials. We from the trials, we select those who go to the World Championships. And then from the World Championships, if we don't make either an A or a B time, then those who, who go to the World Championships uh, and we'll get about two slots are the ones who represent the country in the Olympics. Okay. And um, now, FINA not only represents swimming worldwide, it's actually all water sports. So we have diving, open water swimming. My next question would be this. When, when should we expect maybe to see our swimmers participate in other disciplines under the water bodies or the water sports category? This year, we'll be hosting uh, Kana Zone 3 in November. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the additional sports we, we, are, we are proposing to include is open water and mm -hmm. water polo. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I think it's time for us to diversify the sport. Uh, I agree with you for a long time, we've only been doing swimming. swimming. Um, we, we have, so we, we intend this year uh, to make sure there's water polo and there's open water in this, uh, in this canal. And then from there we can be able to grow into the other disciplines, uh, artistic swimming, uh, diving and the rest. Okay, uh, and now maybe another thing. Swimming, it's, it's concentrated in Nairobi, whereby you can, when it comes to swimming infrastructure, it's not that, it's not that complicated here in Nairobi, but maybe what are we doing to take that to the counties? Because nowadays it's all about you know, devolving everything, basically. So most of the competition is here in Nairobi, but how, what are we doing to ensure that maybe in the future, other guys from other counties can actually actively compete with guys from Nairobi? And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about guys from Mombasa or maybe Kisumu, the other counties. Um, you're right in the sense that uh, a lot of swimming seems to be taking place uh, in Nairobi and, and Mombasa. But I also just like to add that it is in these counties that we have organized swimming. A lot okay. of swimming taking place. Mm -hmm. uh, today I was, I was in Kitangela uh, International School and they were holding a swimming gala um, and over 300 children. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, they, 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 they swam various events. Uh, what we need to see is to have a more prog uh, pragmatic approach uh, to our swimming. Uh, one of the things we are, we, we are doing within the IMC mm -hmm. is to try and, uh, and, and, and improve capacity uh, of, of, of the counties and try, them, try to get them up to, up to speed. For instance, this year alone we've received uh, requests from Meru County mm -hmm. asking, that, asking for them to, to be allowed to form a county association. Uh, within Kiambu here, and a lot of schools and clubs come from Kiambu and they all compete in Nairobi. Uh, Kiambu should be able to stand on its own. Uh, Kajado should be able to stand on its own. Uh, we should see Machako stand on its own. Nakuru um, in, the, in, the, in the 70s and the 80s was a very strong swimming, uh, swimming no. uh, area. Uh, we need to see swimming come up in Kisumu and, and, and the western region. What we're doing is to try and make sure that we provide the necessary support by providing capacity training technical officials, mm -hmm. training coaches, and we do have a clinic that will come up for the western region in April okay. uh, for coaches. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Bruno Reginald, for, of course, joining us here tonight. And remember, we shall actually check in when it comes to the national trials. And we are obviously going to follow up on the elections. Thank you.